This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Prime Minister orders public sector to work from home and announces other new extended measures. New and extended measures have been announced by the Prime Minister under the Disaster Risk Management Act to help contain the continued spread of COVID-19 as the country battles an upsurge in the numbers of people now affected by the disease. There are now more than 9,000 active cases of the disease and 422 deaths. Several hospitals are at capacity or near capacity with 252 people in hospital for treatment. Among the orders announced during a hybrid media briefing still ongoing from Jamaica House is a new work from home order for public sector employees starting this Thursday March 4. Permanent secretaries and head of agencies and departments are to determine which staff will work from home. As for the private sector, businesses are being encouraged to evaluate their operations and where feasible allow their employees to work from home. However, the Prime Minister said an order will be issued to mandate private businesses to make arrangements for persons with comorbidities to work from home. Government entities are also barred from holding any in-person event for the next three weeks. The Prime Minister also said that Jamaicans traveling from overseas will now have to present a negative COVID-19 test before entry into the country. The test must be done no more than 72 hours prior to arriving and presented at check-in. A stay-at-home order is also now in effect for persons 60 years and older. They are allowed out once per day for the necessities of life. The order will remain in effect until March 22. Additionally, there will be a ban on funerals and burials. No burial orders will be issued by public health officials starting March 8 to to March 22, the Prime Minister stated. Holness also announced that places of worship will have to resume hosting hybrid services, catering to majority of congregants using online services. Only a maximum of 10 persons will be allowed to worship in person as of tomorrow, March 1. Weddings will be permitted to continue, but only 25 persons, including the bridegroom, pastor, and two witnesses will be allowed. Public beaches will also be closed until March 22. Double murder in Central Village, St. Catherine. The police are investigating a double murder in Central Village, St. Catherine last night. The victims have been identified as 23-year-old Javon Nugent, otherwise known as Spitty, a construction worker, and Kevon Tullock, whose age was not given, both of Central Village. The police say the men were killed about 9.27 p.m. on Saturday by a group of men armed with high-powered weapons who pounced on Nugent and Tullock while they were in the yard of a premises. The men opened fire, injuring the two men. Residents who had heard the explosions called the police. The injured men were were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. Second killing in Hanover within two days. A 31-year-old man became the second person within two days to be shot and killed by gunmen in the parish of Hanover. Two persons were also shot and injured in the two separate incidents. The deceased in the latest incident has been identified as 31-year-old O'Brien Stetson of a Campbell's Hill, Lansby, Hanover address. Reports are that about 7 p.m. on Thursday, Stetson was driving a white Nissan AD wagon motor car with a female companion on board along the Georgia Main Road in Hanover when they were cornered by gunmen traveling in another car who opened gunfire shooting up the Nissan vehicle. Both Stetson and the female passenger were hit and were rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead and the female was admitted for treatment. No motive has been established for the shooting, which followed another attack in the parish on Tuesday in which 17-year-old student Zalon Curtis was shot and killed and his brother shot and injured during an early morning attack at their Campbell's Hill, Lansby home. Reports are that about 1.36 a.m., the brothers were asleep when they were pounced upon by gunslingers who gained entry to their house by kicking a door open. The brothers, who were both shot, were subsequently rushed to a hospital where the 17-year-old was pronounced dead and his elder brother was admitted in a critical condition. The police have not established any connection between the two attacks. Breadman killed near his bends of Red Hills Road in St. Andrew. The police are investigating the murder of a popular elderly man of Red Hills Road in St. Andrew on Saturday morning. 
The deceased has so far been identified only by his alias, Breadman. The police reported that Breadman parked his Mercedes-Benz motor car across the community of 85 Red Hills Road and walked into one of the lanes there. He was reportedly approached by two men who were aboard a motorcycle who shot him several times. The gunmen then rode from the crime scene. The victim was reportedly shot at least four times in the head and died on the spot. Breadman was a popular figure on Red Hills Road and his death has sent shockwaves through his home community of Cassidy Park. Two men found dead in a car trunk in St. Andrew. Two men were reportedly found dead in a trunk of a great Toyota Axio motor car off Arcadia Drive in St. Andrew on Saturday night. The bodies had what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the heads, and the police believe that the bodies were taken to the location. No one in the area heard any gunshots, but the residents saw the parked car and knowing that the Axio is a motor vehicle that is known to be frequently stolen, called the police at about 11 last night. When the police checked, they realized two bodies were in the trunk. A driver's license with a Pembroke Hall address was found, but when the police checked the address, they were told that no one live there with that name. The identities of the men have therefore not yet been established. The Constant Spring Criminal Investigation Branch is investigating the development. Anger at toll system after wounded cop denied emergency access. There is a growing outrage at the operators of the east-west leg of Highway 2000 after a policeman was stabbed some 14 times in an encounter with a gunman near the Mapen Toll Plaza was reportedly denied emergency access to turn back to get to the Mapen Hospital on Saturday. The injured cop who remains hospitalized in a stable condition, had to resort to hitting down toll barriers with his vehicle in an attempt to save his life. It should be noted that the policeman in seeking to head to the nearby Mapen Hospital would have been on the wrong side of the highway for going in that direction. He was reportedly told by a toll clerk that he could not be allowed passage as desired unless a supervisor gave permission for him to do so. Several police officers, as well as members of the public, have expressed outrage at the stance that was taken, which they contended could have resulted in the death of the police constable who was bleeding profusely. It was reported that, some time after 3 a.m., the cop who is stationed in St. Catherine was on his way to work when he picked up a puncher. Further reports are that, while the officer was changing the tire, he was pounced upon by an armed man. During an altercation, the lawman was stabbed multiple times while his attacker escaped. In a media interview, commanding officer in charge of the St. Catherine North Police Division, Superintendent Steve Brown, said the toll authorities' protocols should be reviewed, taking into account emergencies relating to members of the security forces. When he reached the toll plaza, they told him that he can't go through the toll plaza and he showed them the stab wounds with him bleeding profusely and they still refused. He had to hit down the barriers on the way to the hospital. He is a citizen of this country, Brown argued. Several social media users have also reacted with shock to the reported actions of the toll plaza staff. Whoever the toll operator who did that should be fired, posted one Facebook user. JCF needs to investigate his or her action immediately. This can't be allowed to end like this. What if the officer had lost his life? It is a disgrace, added the social media user. Another shared, speedy recovery officer. Those toll workers not easy, you know. The man could have lost his life because of them. Neither the toll operator nor the toll authority has yet commented on the development. Meant. Bus driver fatally shoots passenger during reported knife attack. Police investigators are probing the shooting death of a man by a licensed firearm holder during an altercation on a bus in St. Thomas on Thursday. The identity of the deceased has not yet been ascertained. Reports are that shortly after 8 p.m., the driver of a Toyota Coaster bus and a passenger on board had an argument which escalated when the bus reached the vicinity of Albion in the parish. Further reports are that the male passenger, who was armed with a knife, attempted to attack the driver who took evasive action and used his licensed firearm to shoot the passenger. The injured man was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.